In compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act of the State of New Jersey, adequate notice of this meeting, the Atlantic County Board of Chosen Freeholders was provided in the following manner. It was published in the press of Atlantic City, mailed to the current Daily Journal, and having the Gazette, having the news, and the written posting boards, posting I'm going to go get more. boards in our county office buildings in Atlantic City, here in Stillwater, and the clerk's office will all rise for an opening prayer. Yeah, no one's being printed. I'll be, I'll be right back. Almighty God, we pray for the strength and courage to work toward the nation and world of peace and understanding. Grant that our decisions be wise, our principles sound, and our performance in the office faithful. Amen. 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 All face the flag. Attention. Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Bennett? Here. Bertino? Here. Corsi? Present. Days? Here. Fitzpatrick? Here. Gatto? Here. Kern? Here. Risley? Here. And for me? Here. Three owners, we've all been provided with a copy of our minutes from December the 12th. We are present, have a chance to review them. Any corrections, additions, or comments we'll have now. Otherwise, I'll take a motion to adopt them. Second. Second, call the roll. Bennett? Abstain. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Fermica? Yes. Okay, first order of business today, ordinance number one. An ordinance to be provided in the speed limits along Zion Road, County Route 615 in the Township of Bay Harbor and the City of Northfield, final reading. Second. Moved and seconded. Any public input? All ordinances in their second reading welcome the public to make comments. Any comments on ordinance number one? Any none? Free order comments. We will call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Dave? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And for me. Yes, ordinance number two, please. An ordinance amending various sections and subsections of Chapter 97 of the Atlantic County Code entitled Parks to set new site fees, amend the methods for fee payments, and to amend provisions regarding applications, regulations, and requirements, including insurance requirements for special events with alcohol in county parks. First reading. Second. Moved and seconded. Ordinances in their first reading will uh, wait for the second reading for public input. Any free order comments? Free order gather? Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, just for a little bit of history, uh, last year uh, in May, we actually um, proposed some amendments to the existing Chapter 97 um, to basically enable our uh, Lake Lenape Park to be able to have events uh, not only inside the catering hall, but outside the catering hall in the park that may involve um, alcohol. Um, we previously in the chapter allowed the wine festival in May's Landing um, as a specific event, but not, not generally allowing other events. So um, we know there's some interest in other people having events at the park um, that, uh, you know, certainly alcohol as part of um, the event is an attraction for them. Um, so we've been uh, working on some ordinance amendments with um, uh, Mr. Ferguson has been really uh, helpful in that process back and forth with Hamilton Township. Um, they had um, some minor adjustments, I think, when we got to the final version, uh, just with regard to process and making sure um, certain procedural pieces were outlined in the amendments. Those are now in, and uh, so now we're ready for uh, bringing this to the public for, uh, for public hearing. Thank you. Yes. Um, uh, when you introduce this in May, I was uh, very uh, supportive and I think this is a great way to bring revenue to the county. I was reading um, the backup and I saw that a security deposit may be required under what circumstances would it not be required? 
Uh, I, I would have to ask some of our folks guys who are here. I know yeah, that it would I depend on the one. It would depend on the scale of the event. If you're not inside the if, if you're inside the catering hall, we would certainly require a deposit for uh, a structure that has much more invested in it, uh, as opposed to maybe an outdoor pavilion with uh, a family reunion or something like that. If you're just doing an outdoor event, we may not require a uh, secure deposit as large because there's not as much exposure or risk to the structure. Thank you. Three on a date. Uh, Chairman, just wanted to, to let the board know that this was all was reviewed by the uh, County Code Review Committee. Um, Parks, Public Works was there along with the uh, County Council. Um, there were a lot of questions, a lot of things were, were hashed out. And um, as Supreme Court Regatta said, that there were still some things that the, the lawyers needed to agree on. And uh, it, it took a while, but here it is uh, for first reading. Thank you. Friel Bertino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a comment, too. This is uh, part of the ongoing process the county's committed to a few years ago to take the passive use and allow of our facilities to make them active uses. It has not only is generating income, but also allowing the opportunity for everyone across the county, not only from Hamilton, to utilize these facilities. They're beautiful in nature. It's an opportunity for everybody to use it. And, and as, I, as I stated earlier, uh, we're moving forward with the progress out there. It's been great. And Happy to support it. I think it's the right thing for us to continue to help. Thank you. Colonel Corsi. I, I, if I may, I, I didn't get the gentleman's name because he didn't say it. Eric Costa, the park superintendent. Hey, don't you, man. I, I have a question uh, on that same line uh, regarding, um, and I believe the question was, what makes you <clears throat> not give a deposit? That, and I think I have the answer, but I'm, I'm going to ask you the <coughs> If, in fact, I rent the facility inside, is that automatically a deposit? As of right now, it's not, but it will be in the future. That's our intention, Should that if that you're going to rent the, uh, the building, you're going to pay a deposit. Because, yeah, I don't want you to pick it, not you, per se. You now start picking and choosing. Ernie, you got to give a deposit. No. Paul, you don't have a deposit. If I'm using the building, it ought to be specified from the beginning. And, and I can understand the outside area, like you said, family union, whatever. Birthday party or something is totally different. But um, if we're going to do that, uh, I think that's a good sign. Um, I've had some reservations from, from day one on the uh, ordinance, and I voted first first reading yes. And I'm going to vote first reading this time. However, I think uh, Freeholder Bertino made it clear it is a start in the right direction if, in fact, we're going to really seriously talk about the improvements at Lake Lenape. Mm -hmm. And that improvement is we've been kicking them out. Starts with the dining hall, et cetera. And we're really serious about doing this. Uh, let's not bite a little at a time, bite the bullet, uh, so to speak. Put the money up, put the kitchen in, and, and, and we're going to really serious about making money. It's a money generated process. Um, I think it's good for everybody. Uh, I'm going to support it on first reading, um, and we'll talk about the other stuff. And I, again, I want to go back to Jerry, Chairman, to talk about the financing for the kitchen equipment, etc. Uh, at some point down the road, if we're serious about doing it, this is a good step to do it. The, the budget subcommittee, which you're, you're more a member, and um, Free Order Gatto is the chair, Free Order Wesley, um, and Free Order Fitzpatrick. We presented to you uh, the, the concept of uh, doing something with the kitchen. Uh, at, at Lake Lenape. Right now, we, as you saw, it's just a hole in the wall. There are two things you asked. One, one you asked us to put something together. Uh, the condition under which we bought the, the property was twofold. The executive asked me to see if I could get the state to help pay for it, and the state paid 50% of, of the purchase of Lake Lenape. The second thing was is if we, we got the property, we would lease the property out to a, a potential profit-making organization where, where the county can make some money. We, we, through parks, have, have worked on a document that the law department got for us from the state. So they're, they're pretty close to having a final document that we will present back to the budget subcommittee. <coughs> the other thing that you, the budget subcommittee asked me to do is, in, present, in presenting our budget to the balance of the board, is to go through uh, the cost for what, what a kitchen would look like. So th those are two things on, on our plate to come back to the uh, budget subcommittee and the rest of the board. And again, we discussed that in, in, in the uh, meeting, but if we're going to go this far, we might as well really seriously take a real serious look at it and, and see if we really want to invest those dollars. Um, I think it's a win-win at the end of the day. Um, 
when do you basically say, okay, go with it? I think all the discussion here is good. Uh, I happen to feel that there should be bonds, deposits, and insurance for any group that comes in, whether it's outside or inside, because we do not know we do not know what possible damage could be done. And uh, I just think that as we get through this first reading and the second reading, leaning more in that direction, if I may, sir. Uh, I just believe that, uh, you know, you just don't think about just contaminating the water, dropping something in the ground. There should be a bond. There should be, you know, even on the outside. That's my opinion. And then we can make decisions as we go down the road. But as far as spending all the money on the kitchen equipment, I think that's something we really have to discuss because it got up to be the four or $500,000 idea, right? Well, we had two, we had two, 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 two groups. One, one was a commercial kitchen and one was a, a lack of better warming. Yeah, I'm all for having a party, but I mean, I'd like to know that we got an ROI on this. Right. Yeah. Like, I know we got this one group that really right. wants to come in, and, and I think we got to go in a proactive way, and as far as I'm concerned, this is a way to diversify our tourism economy, so I'm supporting it, but I'm also on the side of the freeholders asking the questions about you know, I'm going to pull the trigger right. and what it's going to be. So, all right. Anyone else wishes to speak? Can I just, on, on yes, you know, the, the specifications are ready to go on the kitchen, either the commercial kitchen or the warming kitchen. And they, they were done because we had, as you know, we had an, an, an architect that prepared, prepared the, uh, the, the process for us. Well, and, and if I could get to the building, and I don't want to make a sore yeah. subject here, but. When we get to doing the design of the structure, yeah. let's do a pre-as-is construction so we know what rafters aren't there and what, what has to be supported on the bottom because the equipment's going to be heavy. Well, just so you remember, the commercial kitchen deals specifically with the roof and what, what still needs to go on top of the roof. Warming kitchen eliminated that. That's why it's much expensive. All right. Any other comments? Yes, Bill Risley. Yeah, just as an added comment here, it just it should be pointed out just for the purpose of discussion that the money is coming from the open space. <coughs> space camp. That's a good point, Barry. For older, that's a good point. <coughs> just let us know, you know, exactly. where we're spending. Exactly. Right? exactly. Of course, it's too All right. We'll call the roll. Bennett. Yes. Bertino. Yes. Corsi. Yes. Dave. Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And for me. Yes, moving on to resolutions. 27, please. Grant application for a Violence Against Women Act grant to the New Jersey Division of Criminal Justice Office of Victim Witness Advocacy funded grant amount in the amount of $43,687, county in-kind met $4,562. Moved and seconded. Any public input on this application? Three other comments? They'll call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Dave? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And for me. Yes, 28. Grant application for a continuum of care for the homeless grant from the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, funded amount $18,070, and county cash match $4,518. Second. Moved and seconded. Grant application. Any public interest here on 28? Real? Yes. Could you explain what this is for? Yeah. I mean, what? Absolutely. Where, where does the money go? What does it do? All right. Jerry. The Continuum of Care is a, a program that's run for homeless individuals in Atlanta County. This particular money is a um, planning grant where the county, who is the lead entity for the Continuum of Care, hires a um, consultant who then uh, does all the preparation. There, there is a grant that they prepare every year. The, the county, I, I want to make sure you understand, the, the county entities within the county receive approximately $560,000. County government doesn't provide any services for the homeless directly. This $560,000 goes to like five or six different agencies that work within Atlanta County and the state of New Jersey. They provide um, services to the homeless as well as um, Certificates, housing certificates to the house of people that are homeless. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? Three other questions. We'll call the roll. 
Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And for me? Yes, 29. An amended intergovernmental agreement with the Town of Hamilton for survey, design, and permitting work for stormwater drainage improvements along Weymouth Road, no additional cost. Second. Moved and seconded a resolution with no additional cost. Any public input? Real <coughs> comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Move on to 30, please. Agreement with Stockton University, formerly known as Richard Stockton College of New Jersey, for provision of college interns to Atlantic County, no cost. Second. Move and seconded. Another uh, agreement with no cost. Any public input? Real the comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 31. <coughs> Competitive contract with Atlantic Coast Alarms for the provision of fire and security <coughs> alarm monitoring, security surveillance access control equipment, installations, and maintenance services in the amount of $3,747,000, excuse me, $3,747,680 for a five-year period. Second. We've been seconded. Any public input on this competitive contract with Atlantic Coast Alarms? Freeholder comments? Um, Mr. Chairman, just uh, a note. Freeholder We did discuss this in um, the budget committee. Uh, just given the dollar amount as well, Jerry wanted to bring us up to speed on just kind of, kind of some things that happened with this contract. So um, it did go out to bid um, with the intention of the potential to, you know, replace all of the security equipment um, and then have the services follow, the maintenance uh, services follow with that. Atlantic Coast Alarm, um, which happens to be local, which is great, uh, happened to be the only bidder. And since we have Atlantic Coast Alarm equipment today, um, we were able to actually bring that um, a bit amount down. We <coughs> didn't have to do this uh, equipment replacement. So um, it's, this is a nice win um, for the town. Thank you. Any other free comments? Chair, we also along that line. Uh, I, I will, of course, certainly tackle that. However, when you talk in terms of uh, local, um, Atlantic Coast has been around a long time. And uh, no matter when you call them, they're like Johnny on the spot. Absolutely. Not only do they monitor our various county buildings, um, just recently, as everybody knows the story about Harbor Field, we just installed the, what, another 10, 12 10. cameras over there. Had to do some cameras in Pleasantville at the uh, county library. Uh, Johnny on the spot, there's a problem. Uh, I don't think anybody has complained um, about the services they, that they do not provide. Um, again, they're local. It's a five-year deal. When I first saw the dollar amount, I went through the ceiling. And when you kind of calculate it out over a five-year period, I think we come out on top of this one. Any comments? We'll call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Dave? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And for me. Yes. Go to two. Bid contracts with Alpine East Electric Limited Liability Company in the amount of $17,850. Deck Electrical Contractors, Inc. in the amount of $26,880 and McGuire Electrical Construction Limited Liability Company in the amount of $103,950 for Atlantic County Emergency Generator Upgrades and Retrofits. Second. Moved and seconded. Public interest in this uh, confusing resolution. <laughs> Freeholder questions. May somebody explain why we have three contractors in the same resolution? Chairman, um, the reason we bid this way separately, all five categories, there's five, uh, three radio towers, some central kitchen, warehouse, and then we have an alley fire training. The money's being, um, it's being funded by um, emergency operation, emergency management grant. So at the first, all, initial, of it? all of it, the initial costs were like 300,000. Okay. Plus projections. It came in at 148,000. So we, we didn't know, so we figured we would bid it five categories and pick and choose and look at what we could do with the money. As it turns, we end up, end up with three low bidders. Excellent. Okay. Just, you know, never saw that before, but... And these are docking stations, electrical work and docking stations, so we can bring a portable generator in, in the event of an emergency and just plug it in. And, um, Advantage to the people. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Any other free or comments? Really, Bertino. No, I'm just saying it's, uh, that's the way to do it. Instead of having facilities and generators at every location, the old way to do it plug in that you can have a couple that are mobile as needed, depending on the area. I think it's, it's, it's a, uh, 
a smart approach. Very good. Thank you. Any other comments? Call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Dave? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Fermika? Yes. Resolution 33, please. Appointment of Glenn F. Mulvey to the Atlantic County Library Advisory Commission for a term to expire on January 1, 2021. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Anyone in the public wish to speak? Mr. Malby, would you like to say anything? I have nothing to say, Mr. I, Chairman. That is a rare <laughs> time. <laughs> that is a rare thing. For those that don't know, our facilities director, Mr. Malby, retired last year. And uh, it's nice to see you back here. And uh, this will be the first time you're not talking, but that's okay. <laughs> Any other any other comments? Public free holders? All those in favor say aye. aye. Congratulations or condolences. <laughs> I'll take a motion to combine and adopt 34 and 35. Move then seconded. Any of the appointees today in the audience from 34 and 35? Seeing none. Any public input? Saying none. Freeholders? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All appointed. Mr. Stelford and Mr. Carrick. 35A. Chairman, we need a motion to add that, please. Okay. I will take a motion to add 35A. All those in favor say aye. Aye. 35A. Resolution opposing Trump administration proposal to allow offshore oil drilling. Sponsor Karen L. Fitzpatrick. I'd like you to read the resolution, Madam Secretary. <clears throat> Whereas Ryan Zinke, a former congressman from Montana, was appointed by President Donald J. Trump to serve as Secretary of the Department <coughs> of the Interior, and whereas Secretary Zinke has released a proposal on January 4, 2018, to open the Atlantic seaboard to offshore oil drilling, and whereas huge bipartisan majorities in New Jersey have opposed any proposal to open our precious shoreline to petroleum drilling, and whereas the potential damage from an, from an accident or incident would be catastrophic, and whereas it would be impossible to overstate the magnitude of damage to the Atlantic County economy from even the mildest of events. And whereas Secretary Zinke on January 9, 2018, removed the waters off the state of Florida as a possible site because Florida is unique and its coast are heavily dependent on tourism as an economic driver, and whereas New Jersey and Atlantic County is unique and its coast are heavily dependent on tourism as an economic driver, and whereas after Donald Trump's exit from Atlantic City, there are no Trump properties along the New Jersey coastline, while Mar-a-Lago is located in Palm Beach, Florida. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Chosen Freeholders of Atlantic County expresses its vehement opposition in the strongest possible terms to this ill-considered and dangerous proposal. And be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be sent to President Donald Trump, Secretary of the Interior Ryan Zinke, Governor Philip Murphy, Senators Robert Menendez and Cory Booker, Congressman Frank Lobiondo and Thomas MacArthur, State Senators Chris Brown, Jeff Vandrew, Don Ariego, and Chris Connors, Assembly Members Vince Mazio, John Armado, Robert Andrzejczak, Bruce Land, Joe Howarth, Ryan Peters, Brian Rump, and Diane Cove, Boards of Chosen Freeholders for Cape May, Monmouth, and Ocean Counties, Municipal Clerks of Atlantic County, and Atlantic County League of Municipalities, Atlantic County Association of Mayor Mayors, and Atlantic County Association of Township Officials. Mr. Stiegel, I notice you have not given a signature to this. I have not. For the legality in the form of the resolution, can you explain why? Yeah, um, I did prepare a um, form of a uh, resolution that uh, was uh, an alternative uh, to the one that was submitted by the freeholder uh, for reasons that have to do with the content and the uh, manner in which the, uh, the language was uh, uh, was prepared. I am told that uh, uh, by the freeholder that uh, I did that for 
that my assistance was not uh, requested and that I had no authority to do so, which is not true. I am the legislative counsel for the, uh, the Board of Freeholders. The, uh, uh, the operative rule is Rule 18 of the Board's bylaws, which says resolution shall be prepared by the legislative counsel upon request from any freeholder. I took the submission of that as being a request and acted upon it in order to assist uh, the freeholder in having a resolution that might uh, have a better opportunity of passing uh, with the other uh, freeholder members. As you can see from the language of the uh, resolution of this full of political rhetoric, bad of language, and has uh, uh, some uh, possibly slanderous remarks about the people in it. And we don't do that with our resolutions. Resolutions are a act of legislation. About the campaign. The campaign had its place, it's over. But if we order one the position, she's now part of the legislature of the county of Atlantic. And the purpose of the legislature of the county of Atlantic is to legislate and to create laws of which resolutions are a form of, uh, of lawmaking. So I, I did not repeat all her language and I was told that I had no right not to repeat her language. So what you see in front of you is the language uh, from the freeholder before, before any alteration or any assist on my behalf to uh, try and help. Thank you. Uh, I got the motion to add the resolution. I don't. I didn't record the motion uh, to move in the second. I didn't get it said. I'm sorry. We can have. We can have a motion. We can call for the motion to be moved and seconded right now. Moved. Seconded. Okay. Do you have any other questions for me, Mr. Chairman? What, yeah, what's going on? Yeah. No, I, I will, no, I do not. Any other Freeholder comments? Freeholder Bertino. Yeah, uh, Roger, you, you're talking about there's a possibility of slanderous statements in the resolution as it's permitted. That's your uh, your opinion that you're providing that's one of the board. things. That's one of the things that has to be uh, taken into account when a uh, resolution is submitted without any oversight uh, from the board and board's uh, council. <coughs> uh, we, we have a duty to, in fact, uh, make sure that the board itself is not exposed to any liability or, or to that. any uh, political uh, responses that would be unnecessary for the passage of the legislation. The resolution that I prepared as an alternative was had most of that rhetoric taken out and centered on the theme core of the legislation, was, which was to oppose offshore drilling. Uh, in, in that sense, it might have had the uh, might have had the uh, uh, the support of many, if not all. It would be the first time we've actually yeah. done an offshore resolution against drilling. Exactly. We've done it so, before. But the rest of it was a uh, campaign. Uh, uh, Literature you know, I have sat on this board for eight years. And in eight years, we never went after a sitting president or an administration by name. This board is supposed to be apolitical, bipartisan, for the betterment of this county. Now, the reason that Rogers, our solicitor, the solicitor of all your towns, of all your boards, your planning boards, your zoning boards, has the absolute authority to put language into resolutions and motions that is seen fit by the lawyer. That's why we have a solicitor. Otherwise, we don't need him there. We'll just go put our own resolutions up and vote on them. But here is my directive from Freeholder Fitzpatrick. Please find attached freeholders the bylaws as they appear on the website. As we have discussed, the deadline for the agenda is shown on 68. Nowhere in these bylaws is council given the opportunity to edit or change the content of proposed resolutions from board members. That's inaccurate. Taking verbiage out of a proposed resolution to gain support is the tail wagging the dog? Oh, really? So that is why the resolution sits as it's written, and the resolution that was changed is not here. I'll take comments from anybody. Uh, Public, Mike Price, Egg Harbor Township. Hey, Mike. 
Could I hear the attorney's version of what he wrote? He said he wrote something. I didn't. I hear pulled it. Yeah, I can. I can let you hear it. I yeah. pulled it because I'm following. The I didn't request read it. of free older. Could, could you could you recite it publicly? Well, I, I think we can do that. Thank I you. Think we, but I'd like just like to say that this board is not going to become a political grandstand. Not while I'm here. And we'll clarify what is legal, what is rhetoric, and what is imbued in the, tra not the tradition, but the actual legislation. And if necessary, we'll clarify it. All the resolutions go through our solicitor, as they do through all your boards. You can challenge it on any, any which way you want. I'm not questioning that. I just want to hear what his letter says. We didn't hear it. He said he drafted a letter or response. We did. It, was, it wasn't a letter. It wasn't right. a letter. It was an actual resolution. It was an alternative well, resolution. It was a resolution that yeah. was palatable to the to the integrity of this board. What does his resolution say? I will allow it to be read if we have it. Do we have it? We have it. It's on the agenda. Okay. Well then, Madam Clerk, if you would. I'm asking one of my staff to bring it. Okay. Back. We'll bring it up and we'll read. It. Thank you. Okay. I have a copy. Can I just ask a question? No, we're going to read this right now. Oh, 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 I didn't know she had it in her hand. Sorry. We're going to read it right now. Resolution opposing offshore drilling of the coast of New Jersey. Whereas Ryan Zinke, Secretary of the Department of Interior, recently released a proposal to allow offshore drilling along the Atlantic coast. And whereas bipartisan opposition to oil drilling along New Jersey shoreline exists, and whereas it has been reported that Secretary Zinke proposes to remove the shoreline of Florida as a site because Florida is unique and its coasts are heavily dependent on tourism as an economic driver, and whereas New Jersey's and Atlantic County shore are also unique and its coasts are also heavily dependent on tourism as an economic driver, and whereas damage from an accident or incident could severely damage the economy of Atlantic County and the New Jersey shoreline, and now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Atlantic opposes offshore oil drilling off the coast of New Jersey and Atlantic County. Be it further resolved that a certified copy of this resolution be forwarded to all the uh, legislators uh, indicated before. Thank you. Is that all right, Mr. Price? Thank you. Sounds yes. pretty good, right? That sounds reasonable. It would have passed. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Creek Pogue, 169 Cumberland Avenue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I served in municipal government for a little while, and there's different facets, I suppose, and we can perhaps agree to disagree to some extent regarding the role of legal counsel. Um, it is certainly one thing for legal counsel to give their professional opinion as far as whether you're doing something that may potentially be illegal or injurious to um, that particular legal corporation you're representing. Um, and if there was some specific uh, section in the proposed resolution that was slanderous, then perhaps that should be detailed. Um, with all due respect, I would figure that mentioning uh, the president's real estate interests in one area versus another is not a slanderous statement. It is those are facts. There is nothing in New Jersey. There is the summer or southern or winter, I forget what the heck he wants to call it, White House, <coughs> um, that he has. You know, Craig, you've been around Craig, you've been around a long time. You have been around a long time. And and I'm not and, and you know what's going on here. So I appreciate you might even be the author of this. I, that's fine. All I'm saying is we're not going to talk about ex-presidents releasing deserters. We're not going to talk about them releasing people that have impugned the integrity of the United States that are running for Senate. We're not going to talk about anything about an ex-president. And it's going to be in, a, in any resolution of this free order. Mr. Chairman, I would just mention, as I mentioned at the reorganization meeting, that sometimes there is rather tough language that has been put in resolution, has been put in, you, you both been around for a while. Tough language to put in resolutions. Sometimes telling Governor Corzine what to do. There was the language regarding the regional greenhouse gas initiative, et cetera, et cetera. 
and there would be a difference between getting the legal opinion as far as something being unlawful, and if that's the case, that should be obviously changed or acted upon. However, the small p political assessment of whether something would command a majority of the board, with all due respect, <coughs> would not be, we would, I would hope no matter what party we have, what party anyone is in or wherever we are, it's necessarily that political judgment, because that's what it is, commanding five votes, of the particular person who's the legislative council, the solicitor, whichever title the particular level of government uses. And I just would express a concern of that particular assessment being in the equation. Um, but from there, I guess we can try to figure out a little bit of reasoning together, if uh, possible, to move forward on it. Reasoning but, but, but is talking to each other. It's not telling me what I'm doing wrong, and that's the way it is. Reasoning is talking to each other. Chairman. Not telling me what's wrong. Well, somehow that's how we, with all due, res with all due respect, that is somehow, that is sometimes how we move forward okay. on the... I like it. I like it. I like it going I'm forward. I'm happy with that. Thank you. I can create. Thank you. Yes. I would have liked to have had the opportunity to discuss this, but I did not get that opportunity and received that email on the deadline of uh, adding resolutions to the agenda. The second okay. deadline. Okay. So I would have liked that opportunity, but I did not get it. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Fred Akers of the Great Harbor Watershed Association. And uh, this kind of a point of information, there's a time constraint and a target for this kind of resolution. It's very important. And the, the target is the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management because they are requesting public comment in their review uh, inspired by President Trump's executive Fred, we got, you got you covered. Right. We have a resolution that's going to pass. I didn't today. hear that. Yeah, I know you didn't. We got a resolution that's going to pass today. Okay. Any other public input? Free older comments? Chairman, let me. Uh, I've had this conversation with uh, my colleague over the weekend regarding the language uh, in her resolutions, and I made some suggestions and certainly some recommendations. Uh, I understand the the point she's trying to make and want to make. Um, and I understand it is somewhat hard for some people to swallow when you begin to start calling individual names out. Um, I use myself on the, as an example. Folks can't say what I say and do what I do because I'm just as crazy as the next person. But that doesn't make it right. And so what happened is um, I would hope moving forward that as has been indicated, that any resolutions need to go and must go through our solicitor. Uh, I would agree. Uh, that's why I see it being paid. Saying that, uh, I can recall when I served on city council in Atlantic City, and there was an ordinance that came up for that, that I was adamantly opposed to. And my comments almost wind me up with a lawsuit. And the attorney had the council president call a recess, and we went in the back room to discuss the issue. And the attorney at the time made it very clear, my job is to tell you what you can and cannot do. And what you do after that is on you, but I've given you my legal opinion, that's why you hired me. Um, and so, with that being said, all of us have some type of an agenda, no matter where the request comes from or what point we're trying to make but if we want things to pass uh, on a bipartisan um, basis there's called a give and take you got to give up something to get something it's called horse <coughs> trade I might not like you because you call me Ernie but my name is Ernest that's not going to stop me from voting on your ordinance of resolution but the point is we've got to come to the conclusion that all resolutions need to go through our attorney, not outside entities. I don't give a rat's ass who it is. It can't go through outside entities without going through 
the proper channels of our attorneys. Uh, I would agree with you to the point that if we're not going to use our attorney, we need to release him. Because um, I don't mind sitting at that table doing what he does and don't have to respond or answer to, to what's going on if you don't want my legal opinion. Saying that, um, I'm going to support the resolution because I get the legits of it. But I think hoping, moving forward, that there's a better clarification. And uh, one thing about it, I'm not a good texter, and I don't do a lot of texting, because what I say in the text may not come out the way I said it, <laughs> and God forbid what may come out. And so what happens is we need to pick up the phone and call each other and try to open <laughs> a line of communication. I don't have to agree with what you say, uh, but we can agree to disagree. Um, and so saying that, and then I said to my colleague over the weekend, uh, and I recommended that we remove the name. She chose not to do it. Uh, I understand her point. Um, I'm going to support the resolution, um, hoping uh, that from this day forward, you understand that we work together for the good of the county. And you don't have to always agree with what I say, and I don't have to agree with what you say, but let's go to our attorney and get the legal interpretation, not an outside entity that is not really being paid to do this job uh, to represent this board. Because the vote we take, say what we want to say, the vote we take, it affects the people in Atlanta County. And so we got to be very, very careful uh, how we do it. Uh, I would agree that Donald was no earthly good, but that's my personal opinion. But it is what it is. I, I don't agree with the immigration plan, but that's my personal opinion. I think a lot of people would agree with that. Um, but I think I would agree the five, four years that I've been here, we've never called a president out by name. Um, maybe in the side room, in the back room, or... Uh, we call plenty of governors out, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's always an exception. Not in the resolution. Do. Not in the resolution. <laughs> but, but the point is, and, and, and I get what the, the free order is attempting to do, um, but however it goes down, I'm going to support the resolution today, uh, hoping that uh, if the packet doesn't go today, it comes back with the necessary language. Uh, of our solicitor, but I did notice that on resolutions, our solicitor normally signs off on it. There was no signatures on it, and I think I mentioned this to Karen over the weekend when I reviewed it. There was no signatures on it. Uh, but flag went up. Um, but as a make, um, we'll move on. Any other, thank you. Any other other comments? I, I, ju I just have one, and I'm just going to reiterate a little bit what you know what has been said. Um, you know, I, I don't agree with putting somebody's name in it, uh, as we've all, you know, said right here. Uh, once we're elected, we are bipartisan, and that is very, very important and dear to my heart. When I am elected, I'm here for everyone in this county, and I cannot put opinions out there or statements out there that I think, think others may be opposed to. So I, I am not going to vote for it based on that because I don't I feel that I'm here for everyone. And again, that, I feel very strongly about that. We've had past administrations that have done the same thing with the offshore drilling. And then, you know, years later, there was like a recent past point in the administration that did it as well. But we don't put those things in. We work hard, people in this county. We are going to work hard on this as well. And, and get this done and make sure. And that's what had to happen when this went up before in 2014, when so, somebody else opened it up. And we worked hard. We worked hard in this county. We worked hard in this country to get that done and you know, taken off. And that's what we're going to do again. Thank you. Any other real comments? Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Um, I do want to say that I am thinking about all of the um, residents and workforce in Atlanta County, we are the most densely populated state in the country, and yet we can go around the corner from our house, crab our fish, and eat what we catch. Um, millions of dollars are earned by uh, crabbers, clamors, oystermen, and fishermen, and that adds a lot of money to our economy. We're trying to diversify our economy with ecotourism. The beach and boardwalk would be gravely affected by offshore drilling if there were something to go wrong, and I just want to respectfully say that in the January 2nd um, resolution about internet gaming at racetracks, we did name the assembly person from North Jersey. That's correct, because it was going to directly affect their vote. We were getting a message to that. 
So if you don't think there's any, do you think there's anybody on this board that isn't, is not against offshore drilling here? No. Well, anybody no. in this room? No. no. We're not talking about the substance of your resolution. We're talking about the form. Okay. And that is exactly what it says here, the form and legality. It's not signed off by our solicitor. So freeholder, I'm not, all I'm saying is I'm we welcome working together on this. We're all in support of it. But, you know, through our solicitor and with a form that is, you know, of the integrity of this board. Okay. Yes, Real Pertino. Just one question, too, in, in the language that's spelled out in the resolution you're proposing. You're asking that we oppose a offshore to petroleum drilling. What about natural gas drilling that occurs off there? Is that the same thing? Yes, all of them. That should be listed. That's what I'm saying. You've got to be careful in the language. <laughs> Board, I'm, I'm of a mind to say that this thing needs to be reworked in language that is palatable from the from and we can do it as soon as possible through our solicitor's approval. We have another resolution sitting right on here, the next one down, which talks about all kinds of uh, drilling and seismic sonic blasting, which is what you have to do to test for fracking, gas, or petroleum. <coughs> Uh, it covers all, and that is what Frank Lobiana has been working on for the past five years, as well as every legislator in this uh, federal and state legislator in this state, along with the other, along with the other three states. So, Chairman, if I might, go ahead, please. Uh, uh, to the sponsor, are you adamantly objecting uh, to removing the necessary languages that the uh, solicitors recommended uh, to move this resolution forward? No, not. You, you are, you I are. I would agree to that. So you, you would not have any objection to removing the language <laughs> that our solicitors... I, I think yeah. your point is you want to get the resolution passed because it's the right thing to do. That's correct. One of the things you don't want to do is to sit up here and wind up with a 3-6 vote. We didn't get anywhere. Um, so what happens is, you know, for better word, eat the crow, move the language, move the resolution, and hope that our colleagues will support the resolution. So th that is my recommendation uh, to you. What you do is on you. I would agree to that. There already is a, an alternative resolution that has been read into the record that's prepared, and that does remove from the resolution combative uh, political record, and deals with the theme topic of the resolution that uh, probably would have um, so, Chairman, if I may, recommendation to again to the sponsor, can we replace this resolution with the one Rogers re referred to? Can we do that? Yes. Uh, Chairman, I don't know how what the procedure. The procedure would be to. The procedure would be to add it to the. Uh, add to, to the table agenda. this and add it to the resolution. I'll have discussion on that. I'll make a second. I move second. Are you moving the table? Yes. Sure. That's right. Second. Yes. Call the call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Dave? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Gatto? Uh, yes. Kearns? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Fumika? Yes. Okay. Uh, the um, second one is prepared. You should have it in your package because it was distributed. They go. I'll take a motion to add 36. Move. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Read res resolution 36, please. Resolution opposing offshore drilling off the coast of New Jersey. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this? Chairman, is that resolution moved and uh, read into the record yet? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I read it. You read this? You read it. You read it as a as a matter of information. Yeah. You read it as okay. information. It should okay. be read again okay. as a. Uh, so we'll read it into the record, please. Everybody, the second chance at it. If you don't mind. Of course not. Whereas Ryan Zinke, Secretary of the Department of Interior, recently released a proposal to allow offshore <coughs> drilling along the Atlantic coast 
and whereas bipartisan opposition to oil drilling along New Jersey's shoreline exists, and whereas it has been reported that Secretary Zinke proposes to remove the shoreline of Florida as a site because Florida is unique and its coast are heavily dependent on tourism as an economic driver, and whereas New Jersey's and Atlantic County shoreline are also unique and its coast are also heavily dependent on tourism as an economic driver, and whereas damage from an accident or incident could severely damage the economy of Atlantic County and the New Jersey shoreline, and now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Atlantic opposes offshore oil drilling <coughs> off the coast of New Jersey and Atlantic County. Be it further resolved that a certified copy <coughs> of this resolution be forwarded to the President of the United States, the Secretary of the Interior, Governor Philip Murphy, New Jersey Senators Robert Menendez and Cory Booker, Congressman Frank Lobiondo and Thomas McArthur, State Senators Chris Brown, Jeff Van Drew, Don Ariego, and Chris Connors, Assembly Persons Vince Mazio, John Armato, Robert Andrzejczak, Bruce Land, Joe Howard, Ron Peters, Brian Lump, and Diane Gould. Board the chosen freeholders of Cape May, Monmouth, and Out Ocean Counties, Municipal Clerks of Atlantic County, Atlantic County League of Municipalities, Atlantic County o Association of Mayors, and Atlantic County Association of Township Officials. Thank you. So it has been moved and seconded. It's read into the record. Are there any more comments? Call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Horsey? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Tamika? Yes. Move it on to 37, please. Resolution supporting and endorsing a bipartisan bill, H.R. 2158, the Atlantic Seismic Air Gun Protection Act, introduced in Congress by Congressman Frank Lobiondo, Republican New Jersey District 2, and Congressman Don Bayer, Democrat Virginia District 8. Sponsor Maureen Kern. Moved and seconded. Moved and seconded. Carol Kern, you have the floor. Um, this came, well, it's come to our attention because everything's going on in the country right now with this being brought up about the offshore dr drilling. But recently, um, it was in the newspaper about two weeks ago that uh, Congressman Lobiondo had requested a public hearing in Cape May with the Bureau of Ocean uh, Energy Management Group. Um, seismic air gun, it, that's what you have to do prior <coughs> to drilling. They have to go out there and, you know, they <coughs> test the waters. And I'm going to have Mr. Akers uh, describe this a little bit more technically than um, I can. But what they do is it goes out and it um, it is a very loud noise. It will you know, crack your eardrums if you had it. It, um, it is heard from like 2,500 miles away. So here to say like Los Angeles, that can be heard. Uh, it goes down, it hits, and it brings a message back up as to what's there. These seismic air guns go out on uh, ships. Uh, there's quite a few of them. They uh, send them out every, and correct me if I'm wrong, when you get up, I have no problem with that, but I think it's every like 10 to 12 seconds, one is being shot off, and they're being shot off uh, throughout the day, and they go weekly, they go monthly, they, it go, you know, goes for a very um, a long distance of time that this is going on out in the ocean. There is a lot of information out there about that, Obviously, there are some groups that say this is not uh, does not hurt anything. I you know, but there's you know quite a bit of scientific information that it does. There are some uh, alternatives that are being studied right now to seismic than using seismic air guns. Uh, they are not approved yet, but they are in the works. And uh, basically, right now there has there isn't enough data out there. There hasn't, this has not been studied for a long enough time to go out there and say that this is okay to keep doing seismic air gun. Uh, so at this time I have asked, oh, you know, I, I have all little uh, things, but you know, this is just a little bit of a chart that shows the seismic air gun, and this is a jet engine. So then it just kind of goes down a little bit from there, if everybody can kind of see that, I can pass this around as well. But there, I mean, it, it's pretty detailed information about this, and I did ask uh, Mr. Akers to be here, um, you know, to discuss, uh, you know, his, you know, viewpoint on this as well. Um, Fred, I should say, let's see, I didn't bring my glasses, so maybe you can introduce yourself and all. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Fred Akers uh, from the Green River Watershed Association. And I do know quite a bit about this. Uh, 
to try to bring the river herring back that had disappeared from our waters. I've engaged in uh, national fisheries management with the Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council in particular. And I volunteered to be on one of their advisory panels, which is called the Ocean and Eco Ocean Planning and Ecosystem Advisory Panel. And they tasked us to take up a policy uh, to create a policy for the Mid-Atlantic Fishery uh, Management Council, which is in charge of protecting fish in federal waters uh, for fisheries and the economy and so forth. And <clears throat> so I'm on that advisory panel, and it's about half commercial fishermen, about half conservation interests. And usually we don't agree on most things, but we could come to an agreement, no problem, that oil and gas exploration in the Atlantic Ocean was a bad, bad idea, and the Mid-Atlantic Council should be, have a policy that's opposed to that. And <clears throat> specifically to seismic testing, they have taken our advice on this policy, and they have submitted comments already to agencies that need a permit to do this, because the seismic testing is so uh, devastating to the marine environment that if you want to do it, you have to get a permit to take marine mammals. It'd be a takings permit to do it. So you don't need to know the, the technical part of it. Uh, the ocean, among many other things, is an acoustic environment. There's an acoustic uh, level to it that the creatures that are in there uh, operate on. And if you damage that acoustic environment, you, you're going to screw things up. So to the, to the legislation, uh, I've known Frank Lovianda for many years. And he's a, a fairly courageous and determined advocate for the environment. And I think this bill is a strategic uh, action on his part to try to uh, make a law against seismic testing, which would essentially prevent <coughs> offshore oil and gas drilling, because that's the exploration part, is the seismic testing. So I think that, that you know, this is a good action you're taking. I also want to thank you for doing this now because I see a, a kind of a problem with the fatigue of the advocacy against offshore uh, gas and oil drilling because back in 2014 there was seismic testing proposals from Rutgers, you know, off of uh, Ocean County and there was a big, you know, uproar. The public was educated about the problems of it and all. Uh, and then the Obama administration proposed to do it from in the South Atlantic to our South. Virginia. Yeah, and again, a big, uh, you know, upwelling of resolutions and public comments and business petitions and all kinds of things. And now we have a new administration, and it's like all of that other stuff, all those thousands, hundreds of thousands of comments against ocean drilling got thrown out the window. And we have to start over again. So you guys are kind of in a leadership position to do that. But one thing I'm going to ask is make sure when you publish it that you go and enter it to the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management in the comment part on their document. So they have a document open to public comments. And our comments need to get in there. I mean, we could send them to the governor, you know, to the president. They really need to go in there, and we need to overwhelm the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management <coughs> with your opposition to their leasing and, and their whole deal. Thank you. And I, I just want to reiterate that it was, it was introduced by uh, Congressman Bayo from Virginia, and uh, Frank Lobiondo uh, signed off on it. Plus, there was also another, there was like an additional 35, I think, congressmen, all bipartisan, that have signed off on this bill. And it's really important that we get back in and do the fight again. We also have uh, Lisa Bender. Do you have anything you want to say, Bob? Oh, I just want. I'm Lisa Bender. I'm the executive director of the Pat Kong Creek Foundation. Um, we're you know a local group, even though it seems like our you know our area is small. With Pat Kong Creek here um, is in Summers Point and Linwood and Hunter Township, but it's a big part of Atlantic County and a big part of the recreation. Um, we have 10 endangered, spe uh, endangered or threatened species living back there, and we just agree that this is a, um, a great resolution. Um, we are against any seismic testing. Um, as Fred said, 
we don't really know, and, and as Maureen said, we don't really know the effects of even the seismic aspect of it and the sound, and it just, it's really creates a problem in the marine environment, especially for the whales and um, dolphins, since they use um, acoustics for their calling and their reproduction and everything. So um, it's really a bad thing for that part. And we also, um, leading to, if it goes through and leads to oil exploration, of course, that could have a really devastating impact, um, not only on the animals, but on the economy and the tourism. So we are definitely against it and um, support this resolution. Thank you. And for another day, Mr. It does, or the resolution does ask for a copy to go to the U.S. Secretary of the Department of the Interior. You, you mentioned that you go specifically to the Ocean Global Global Global. Ocean Management. Okay. Yeah, that's that's what I recommend. Like, I'm going to be submitting comments, and there's a place to do that specifically for what the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management's program is. So, I I, I recommend that you target that and the others too. You can show us how to do it, and we'll yeah. enter it. Yeah. Meeting. How's that sound? Yeah. We can upload it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We can enter that to the uh, distribution of, of the. Uh, okay. Well, add, well add, 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 you can mail it in too. You can mail it. So I'll give you the, the docket number and. All right. Thank you. Any other Have comments? Do we have to formally add that to? Roger, we have to formally add that to distribution. I don't think so. I think you've uh, you've got to. Half the world in there already. Okay. So. <laughs> <it's got> a, <laughs> 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 All right, very good. Like our Call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Martina? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Dave? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Hearn? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kramika? Yes. 38, please. Resolution urging bipartisan reintroduction of the Garden State Growth Zone Bill as soon as possible. Sponsors Ernest D. Corsi and Frank D. Kramika. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Well, of course, you have the floor. Uh, Chairman, certainly to the audience, as you know, Governor Chris Christie on his way out of the office uh, a couple weeks ago, pocket vetoed a uh, uh, bill that was passed by both houses, the uh, Assembly and the Assembly, and the Senate and the Assembly, a bipartisan uh, support that talked about urban growth. And uh, it was a bill to support urban growth tax credits in the Atlantic City and Atlantic <coughs> Airport uh, area, out at the uh, FAA. Uh, F -E, uh, the, 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 the F A tax center. That is correct. Uh, and so, right. so he kind of the governor, Governor Chris Christie, he it on the way out. We're asking that uh, the legislators reintroduce it, mm -hmm. uh, fast track it, and that hope that uh, Governor Murphy uh, would support it. Um, as you know, Chris Christie also signed package bills on his way out. Uh, giving a $5 billion tax incentive uh, to um, Amazon uh, to come to New Jersey. And it looked like North was one of the places that was picked. But not, it's in the final. Whether it happens or not is it, different. But yesterday I noticed that Governor Murphy uh, wholeheartedly came out and supported the, uh, the uh, bill for um, the tax credits for Amazon to go to uh, North. $5 billion coming from the state. Seven, uh, two billion coming from the city of Newark, as Denny Levinson said, that's a big billions, a seven billion dollars um, of tax credits. And we're talking about right here in Atlantic County, uh, trying to boost the economy here okay. and to bring more businesses uh, in and around Atlantic City and Atlantic County. And what great, great, great opportunity to do it right at the airport. And so for Chris Christie, uh, for whatever reason, I have my personal reasons why he pocket vetoed and um, why he did what he did. But uh, it's interesting that this resolution is on the agenda today because Governor Murphy will be in Atlantic City tomorrow uh, at the windmills. And uh, I have all intent on hand delivering in, uh, the resolution uh, if, in fact, this board sees the, the fit to uh, certainly support it, uh, urging him to uh, revisit that and uh, ask our legislators to uh, Reintroduce it. I had the opportunity last week to talk to uh, Senator now Senator Chris Brown about it, uh, Senator Tom Kane, uh, and a couple other senators that we were over to Stockton College. They indicated they supported it the first time, uh, and if they come back, they would support it again. And so, since it's a hot item, we need to hit it, uh, hit the iron while it's hot, and uh, hoping that we get the support from our governor and our legislators. Um, but if we sit by and do nothing, uh, it, it will be interesting. Let me just say this in closing. 
Uh, and as some of you know, I did get the opportunity to serve on Governor Murphy's transition team for urban growth. Uh, because you created a transition team of urban growth, and there was a bill regarding urban growth, we would certainly hope he would look at this favorable uh, and to certainly to move forward uh, on it. Um, where do we go from here? We don't know. If you ask not, you receive not. So we're going to go back and ask them um, for bipartisan support and certainly ask my colleagues to do the same. Seems to me, Ernie, the pressure's on you. The only one thing I want to say is that uh, it is it is uniquely important to Atlantic County because this bill would have put that one or two mile perimeter around the airport and our buildings are going up at the Aeronautic Tech Center and this is definitely the time for us to have incentives. So everything you said I agree with. Real Dave? Yeah, just on, actually just last week I had um, a couple of members of the public ask about uh, why, if this is so important, why hasn't been done? Why is the county stepping up? Why is the HT stepping up? And uh, I, you know, I did reach out to, to Mr. Kyle for, you know, for some updates on what's going on. Um, but it's actually all in this resolution that it's in the aviation district. It's not just for the airport. And uh, there's a lot of misperception um, out there that I'm still talking about just next gen because it was the next gen park. Uh, you know, he said that stops and starts for 10 years. It's not still, it's still not coming to fruition. Um, that, that I wanted just to clarify that. It's just in the aviation district, as you said, 22 miles outside of the airport. It's so. doing a lot of jobs. Any other comments, please? Thank you. Okay, we'll call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertina? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Formica? Yes. 39? Resol amending resolution 3 of 2018, canceling the regular meeting of February 6, 2018, and then informing the newspapers. Okay. Moved and seconded. Any public input? Three holders, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, do we have to add 40, Roger? Let me take a look at the agenda. Yeah, that came late, so it has to be added. Yeah. If there is a desire to do so. Oh, I'm sorry. It did not come late. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're having a request. Can you move this? <laughs> um, what, may I say something? Yes, please. Um, I would uh, ask that we instead add the uh, resolution that Mr. Steele had produced um, that, that mirrors that resolution with the other language. But that's number 41. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, we have to add that back on, right? <coughs> so, the, uh, yeah, so 40, you need to deal with that first. Uh, it is on the agenda. Let's take a motion to the table, please. We need a motion to table. Motion to the table. Second. Right. Call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Formica? Yes, so take a motion to add 41 back to the resolution today. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. 41, please. Resolution endorsing the Gottheimer Murphy proposal for the creation of charitable support funds by municipalities to allow taxpayers to deduct as charitable contributions payments to same. Move and seconded. Would like to read the resolution, please? Uh, Freeholder Bertino moved it. I'm sorry. Seconded. Second. Whereas President Donald J. Trump signed into law the new federal tax bill. Oh, I'm sorry. 41. 41, if you have it. I don't know if you have it, Madam That is it. That is it. I read, you want me to yeah. reread yeah, the right? Yeah, you got it. You got it. No, it doesn't sound yes. the same in the title. Yes. Because the theme of your legislation dealt with the Gottheimer. Uh, Murphy proposal uh, to uh, attempt to uh, have litigation, or not litigation, I understand. Yes. Okay. Well, they need a charitable uh, uh, tax, chari charitable <coughs> giving in lieu of, uh, of uh, actual tax payments. Okay, Madam Secretary. Whereas President Donald J. Trump signed into law the new federal tax bill on December 22, 2017, and whereas both U.S. Senators and 11 of 12 members of Congress from New Jersey opposed the tax bill, except Representative Thomas MacArthur, Republican District 3, and whereas the reduction of deductibility for state and local taxes was a major reason for the opposition of 13 of the 14 federally elected officials from New Jersey, 
and whereas according to Internal Revenue Service statistics for 2015 returns, there are 3,280 taxpayers in Atlantic County who would lose an average of $16,014 of deductions because of the change, and whereas Democratic <coughs> Governor Philip Murphy and Congressman Joshua Gottheimer of Bergen County have proposed that municipalities create support funds to allow people to make contributions to the general welfare <coughs> that taxpayers would be able to deduct as charitable contributions. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Atlantic endorses the Gottheimer Murphy proposal and encourages state legislators serving Atlantic County to support any necessary legislation to implement the proposal, and be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be sent to all the municip municipal clerks in Atlantic County, the Atlantic County Legal Municipalities, the Atlantic County Mayor's Association, the Atlantic County Township Officials Association, the state legislators serving Atlantic County, Congressman Frank Lobianda, Lobiando, and Joshua Gottheimer, and Governor Philip Murphy. Okay, discussion on the motion. And um, I'm going to um, mention this to um, our solicitor, uh, you know, or unless anybody else has things. There, there's a lot of talk about this right now because obviously it's a major concern for all, all of us, especially like New Jersey and I believe New York and a you know, number of states. This is really going to affect all of our constituents and you know, people throughout the state. The charitable contribution, some of the things I'm reading on that, that there's still questions if it's legal. Correct. So, Correct. okay. Well, it's questionable whether it would have any legal effect. If you designate a charitable fund to be the uh, designee of your the money, so it just happens to equal what your taxes would be, and you pay it to the fund instead of paying it to the to your tax collector, haven't you done the same thing? It looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, might be a duck. So there's a lot of issues out there as to whether or not such a thing could even pass muster, and it isn't even in the form of legislation yet. It's just being questioned in the courts right now. Well, it's now. a proposal by uh, uh, Murphy and uh, the, uh, uh, the North Jersey uh, 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 Congressman, but it has not found its way into litigation into the legislation form at uh, the congressional level for the first time. Before. It is a proposal, and it's uh, being mimicked in other states, such as California, New York, Illinois, New Jersey, New York, high tax states, which were the ones that were most affected by the uh, tax law changes uh, where there's the limitation on the uh, amount of tax uh, taxes that uh, would be a deductible uh, item on your tax return, property taxes. So it's being discussed, uh, there's a lot of different uh, variations on it. This particular variation, I have no idea whether it will pass, whether it will find its way into legislation or not, or whether even it's uh, the most uh, favored that we uh, have to take. Mm -hmm. It is a proposal out there that has been espoused by your governor at this point in time. Thank you. Further comments? Chair. Yes. The governor also is joining with the governors of Connecticut and New York to sue the federal government on behalf of, of their constituents to, who will lose money because of the $10,000 cap. Right, which also has not yet happened. Um, and of course, uh, that's a different pathway than the one that was the theme of your suggestion in your resolution. You're centered on the proposed name, by the way. Yes, Gatto. Yeah, Chairman, thank you. Um, I, I have several issues with this. I mean, the fact, number one, that it's not even pending legislation yet, I think is an issue. Um, Number two, um, the fact that the legality is in question, I think, is an issue. I mean, number three, the idea of people voluntarily giving the government, potentially, more money <coughs> in the hopes of a tax deduction. But not get many papers. Uh, yeah, I'm not giving them any more money than, than needed. Um, I, I thought we were supposed to be trying to not take more money from them, so maybe that's what the congressman should be focusing on. Um, but but you mentioned in here that um, there are 3,280 taxpayers in Atlanta County who would 
be affected. Uh, last I checked, we had a quarter of a million people in Atlanta County, so you're basically saying that 99% of our taxpayers would benefit, um, essentially. And the last check, I checked the uh, Treasury website, um, the average residential tax bill in Atlanta County is around $6,000. So it's really uh, meaningless to a majority. Um, Linwood and uh, Longport come close. Um, Longport individually comes out to 9900 on average. Linwood comes out to $10,011 on average. So I don't, yeah, I don't have, a, Fielder, I don't have that uh, fact uh, that in my in my reservoir. I just did my own uh, research on this. Uh, I didn't know much came, about the proposal. I yeah. did my own internet research. That I um, was just reading up on some facts right. and statistics. And uh, so for these reasons that I lay out, I think it's uh, really a, uh, not something that I'm in favor of supporting right. because I, I don't think it benefits the, the residents of Atlanta County in any way. I can't verify that fact. That actually was in the original draft of the uh, Okay, well, people can verify it on the Treasury website where I got it. it. <laughs> Real dates. Um, yeah, I mean, some of my issues are just with the, the verbiage of the resolution itself. I mean, I, I, I very rarely would allow any, you know, over anything just has a blank slate where it says any necessary legislation to implement. I'm not sure that, you know, again, there, there's no legislation that we're specifically supporting or opposing. Um, and my understanding is that the state of Jersey clearly doesn't allow the charitable contributions to offset state income tax. So it would have to be some sort of state legislation. Right now, we're talking about a governor and a, a United States congressman may be able to convince the IRS to recognize it, but there's no state piece that would allow the state to recognize it. So, you know, without having any specific legislation, I, I, I can't support something that I, I don't know the details about. Thank you, Pre-Elder. Pre-Elder Risley? Chairman, I'm, I'm opposed to this as well for the various reasons that are already given here. Uh, whether it's legal, it's not legislation, uh, I'm, I'm not going to go there. Atlantic County government, you know, has uh, been held, I think, in high esteem uh, for the reasons that we don't go there. And we don't do these types of things. We don't get into political mismatch and so on and so forth. Uh, we're, we, we are above that, and we deal with uh, issues that are immediately germane to Atlantic County, Atlantic County residents, and that's where we should be focused. So uh, I, I can't support this. <coughs> Pillar? Any other comments? Pillar, for that. Any comments? Yeah. You can, <coughs> you can you just take the just vote. Yeah, if that'll just end discussion. We'd have to, you know, you just would have voted up or down. You can vote it any way you want. That's the best way to do it. You can share with you before you, you take that. Yeah. Um, and I would agree with my colleague on most of what they said. Uh, I, I would suggest to, to my colleague that we take uh, either vote it down and come back um, with some stronger language. I think we really need to find out what the legislators are going to do. Um, it's a good gesture. You don't want to be out there passing something they may not even entertain uh, at this time. Now, they may, they may not. I mean, that's what the governor talked about it. That will mean the legislators are going to uh, support everything he recommended. I, mean, I see fights coming now to send the president. Uh, yeah. uh, so <coughs> just because they say it, that necessarily means it's the gospel. But what we want to do is to make sure we have some more meat and potatoes to what it is you're proposing to uh, offer up to the residents of Atlanta County. So I think what we should do is go ahead and vote it down and then at some point just to bring it back to the So that's better than the table. Call the vote. Bennett? No. Martino? No. Corsi? No. Days? No. Fitzpatrick? No. Gatto? No. Kern? No. Risley? No. And Fermica? No. Okay, that brings us to the end of our printed agenda. And uh, we now will take reports of any special committees. I, I see a resolution 42. Yeah. It was withdrawn. I'm sorry. It was withdrawn today.
And if it wasn't on your piece, I apologize. That was that's wrong. That's that. You should just brought this back now. She just handed this, this out. This was a second uh, copy. Okay, it, it is officially, it was officially withdrawn today. So I apologize. Yeah, why? <laughs> it was withdrawn for a variety of reasons. Language, structure. But sort of some of the same reasons that we always use to withdraw. Legal, timing. All right, that brings us to the end of our printed agenda. Any reports to special committees? Chairman. Yes, real uh, reports. This week the jail committee met with representatives of the state uh, from the JJC, I believe it's called. Uh, we met regarding Harbor Fields and the incident that took place out there. Uh, it was myself, Frio de Maureen, and uh, Frio de... Uh, Risley, along with Jerry DiRosso and representatives of the state. Um, it was, a, in my opinion, very productive. And Roger, I'm sorry, our solicitor. Um, oh, he does do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was on point, too. Um, we had a meeting uh, regarding the incident that happened at Harvard Fields. Uh, they indicated they did meet with the mayor of Egg Harbor City and members of city council uh, to talk about measures and things that was going to take place uh, safety-wise. Uh, perhaps that that incident doesn't happen again. Uh, while we were there a couple weeks ago, uh, Frio de Risley and I, they were installing new cameras. Uh, since then, they've done some additional things that we're not privileged to uh, talk about. Uh, we all agree that uh, certain things that we cannot tell the public uh, what's going on over there, other than uh, there are some major um, things taking place at Harbor Fields, for an example. Um, we talked about the light, uh, the, the cameras, we talked about the fencing. Uh, he did tell us that we could tell you that they're doing additional training uh, with the employees, et cetera. Uh, and so I thought the meeting was a very productive meeting uh, over there because we, the free order board, was going to move to subpoena uh, the, the, the individuals to come here. Uh, but the way it worked out, I think it was a better and a productive meeting. Uh, that we didn't have to do a dog and pony show, and we wanted to talk about policies and not politics, so we kept all that other stuff out. I would yield to my other colleagues who was uh, there uh, and ask a lot of questions on behalf of some of the members of the Freedom Group. I would just want to say, Mr. that I would echo everything uh, through our course you have stated. It was a very good meeting. Uh, we got into a lot of the details and information, and. Uh, we spent uh, quite a bit of time there, and uh, again, and we got the answers I think we wanted to hear, and uh, about staffing, about uh, how the uh, <coughs> facility is operated. Uh, so I'm, I'm very comfortable with what I heard. So thank you. Thank you, Freola. I like the idea that they um, reiterated to us, which was an important topic, that it is a detention center. It's not a jail, it is a detention center. And um, a lot of communities, you, you were, we're trying to keep them out of jail. These are not convicted criminals. They have not been convicted of anything yet. They've been charged. They've not been convicted. But they, you know, the, we use the um, the ankle bracelets and different ways of getting them back into the community and the community helping these individuals out. So that that was something that they um, reiterated as well. Um, and we we did bring some of the uh, questions that the board had. Up to them, you know, you know, remarks. But they, it, was a, it was a good meeting. Thank you. Also, I, I'd be remiss if we didn't say that uh, one of our uh, assistants in the office here assisted us in the meeting and she did an outstanding job. But we would certainly ask Roger if he would like to chime in as our attorney. He has some questions too um, that <coughs> was pretty interesting. It was. It was. Uh it was a, a confidential session. A lot of the things that are going on for reasons that you might understand and expect would not be released publicly by the uh, juvenile uh, detention commission at this point in time. There is an investigation that is currently going on. It is not concluded. When it does conclude, there may be a summary or a short report that would be released as a public document. We ask that we be supplied with that. Uh, if when that happens, they don't have to, but we ask that they do so, and I believe that they will comply with that request. The uh, the other things that they're already in the process of doing 
is hardening the uh, facility itself. When I say hardening, I mean that in the sense that they are actually doing what they can to make it more secure. Uh, there is fencing that is uh, being done, additional fencing around the perimeter. Uh, there are retraining and refreshing of uh, their personnel staff. Uh, there are uh, attempts uh, to reduce uh, the opportunity for uh, the occurrence in the future that are uh, factual and very logistical and uh, uh, good opportunity. It was a very fruitful meeting. Uh, I think that we all enjoyed the opportunity to meet the people that were in charge, and I think they were very anxious to satisfy the good of the freeholders that it was taking remedial action. I think it also should be noted the state of New Jersey, the amount of respect that they have for Jerry DiRosa. I mean, they couldn't talk enough about Jerry and their relationship, <laughs> you know, in terms of the communications and Jerry's up on stuff. They keep him informed. He keeps them informed. That goes a lot, a long ways because when you're talking to the administration yeah. and the other hand don't know what's going on, uh, the, the, the level of respect they had for Jerry, I, I tell you, I almost thought Jerry worked for them. Uh, but be, be as it may, um, it cannot go uh, remiss, Jerry. Um, Everything you've said about, they refer to Ms. KD, uh, Mr. Brown, Kevin Brown, uh, what a guy, the executive director, uh, right on point, so uh, um, they said they hear a lot. Very good. All right, any other reports of special committees today? Freeholders, we want to report anything today? Freeholder right. Gatto? Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, sorry, uh, just a quick uh, report out on budget committee. We um, continue to meet. Um, we will meet probably uh, one more time before we are ready, I think, to um, bring an introduction uh, of the budget to the, to the board. Um, so you can look forward to that. And then uh, just some <clears throat> from WCADA, Local Advisory Council on Alcoholism and, and Drug Abuse, um, just a quick reminder, starting uh, when, next Wednesday, the 7th, um, or February 7th, March 7th, and April 4th, we have free Narcan trainings. Uh, 10 a.m. to noon on uh, 10 West Jimmy Leeds Road in Galloway, and um, we are part sponsor uh, with the Urban Treatment Association on uh, offering that training and uh, offering a free Narcan kit uh, to anyone who attends. So just uh, something of interest for this office. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Kern. I just have a, a couple of notes. Um, the uh, just so everyone knows, we are still doing um, the. Uh, the flu, the um, flu shots within the county, as long as supplies last, but we are still doing them. Uh, you know, it's very, very important. We're all watching the news and seeing what's going on. Uh, in addition to that, we're doing free BP screenings during the heart month, which is this month. And so all that information is on our website as well. Uh, in addition, uh, February 7th, we brought this up you know, once before and involved with the uh, Disability Advisory Board, that emergency preparedness for people with functional needs. Um, they have a meeting February 7th, 10.30 to 12 noon, the Artemis Center for Independent Living in Jimmy Leeds Road in Galloway. So it's individuals who with disabilities are invited to attend. There's no cost for the event, but uh, it allows the local office of emergency management evaluation their go bags. Um, <coughs> The, regis uh, the register ready database and tips for sheltering in place. So there, we have some information on that as well. Um, and Greenholder Fitzpatrick and I also attended the Mayor's Association meeting. And uh, it, it was a, a light attendance, and I think maybe the flu was going around quite a bit to some of the members there. <laughs> so. Thank you. All right. Any other committee reports? Mr. Risley, I just briefly. Chairman, um, the county executive has again appointed me to uh, represent the county as the SJC Field South Jersey Transportation Planning Organization. Um, we had our reorganization meeting uh, yesterday. Um, uh, I am the secretary treasurer of the organization, and uh, we have regular meetings. And I travel to the meetings with uh, John Peterson. <laughs> And of course, the SJTPO gets involved with uh, federal monies that come through the state and ultimately to the county. And it is a gigantic bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is absolutely mind-boggling. 
and you wonder how our federal government operates because there are so many bills and so many programs and we're trying to write things to fit to be able to uh, get a particular grant for Atlantic County. One of them we discussed at this meeting was the bicycle racks. Okay, they're going to be installed. $30,000 yeah, engineering exactly, required bicycle racks. Exactly. There are about eight or ten bicycle racks that will go in and, and Ventnor and Margate. Now that total project the federal government is going to give us is to over $200,000. So this is the kind of thing that, that goes on. Now if we don't apply and get it, it certainly will go somewhere else. But uh, there's a lot of money that flows from the federal government to the state government uh, for roads, for uh, bridges, for all kinds of uh, pedestrian projects. So it is quite a uh, bureaucracy and uh, we're there to represent uh, Atlantic County. <coughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Any unfinished business? Seeing none, new business. Yes, Philip Bertino. Uh, just one, I uh, was speaking with uh, Rick Doby, the head of the ACUA, and he wanted to uh, extend his invitation to the freeholders uh, board again uh, for a tour of the solid waste or the um, uh, wastewater treatment facilities out there. Uh, he said that if anyone has any questions or any interest, he'd love to uh, have people come out sometime. If you're interested in going out and seeing that, please contact him. Uh, he'll set up an appointment that fits with you guys and see it if you haven't. Anybody that hasn't been out there, it's a pretty unique operation that's really state of the art. Um, I know, I believe the governor's going to be going down tomorrow. They're talking about a project out there where they put in batteries and they're uh, going to be able to run the facility somewhat off these batteries. It's a little bit new in uh, technology and new stuff that they're working on. So uh, I think it's neat to see. And just he wanted me to make sure I extend that invitation to all the members of the free order. Thank you. Real, only comment to that is, is that um, if you don't live over that way, which I do, depends on which way the windows go when they open, <laughs> when they open up the plants, you got a problem. That's a hat to God. Check the tomato plants. Any other new business? <laughs> We've all received uh, correspondence. Any free owners wish to discuss? Do we wish to discuss any correspondence today? Seeing none. We're going to open it up to the public. Anyone in the public wish to speak, please feel free to come forward. You can stay there. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a little trapped in, but that's okay. I see the situation. <laughs> Thank you. Um, a little, uh, I'll call it bipartisan fact-finding, and hopefully it'll be well-received in that way. Uh, there was a statement made recently um, in Estelle Manor that a uh, county freeholder um, had heard that uh, Mayor Teasenfitz has a plan to combine Estelle Manor and Weymouth, which was news to uh, many people. I didn't know if any of the freeholders had any idea what that basis would be. I didn't think there was, but I just doing my due diligence and I asked. So therefore, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anyone else in the public wish to speak? Yes, ma'am. Um, sorry, as an environmentalist, as you guys know, I am already. I'm on Summer Point Green Team and the Environmental Commission. And I just noticed that all of you have individual water bottles. So it would be awesome <laughs> <laughs> if we could have reusable, you know, yeah, even if you guys fill your water bottle before you come in, reusable one. That would be really nice, a good example for the rest of us. Um, that's it. Sonia, <laughs> uh, you put that in the budget, please. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you probably it's want to right somewhere in the office. You can, like a water dispenser. Yeah. It's cheaper. <laughs> well, there's yes. a budget the water dispenser, or the new ones that it's like a water fountain, and you have the water bottle sure. filler. I think around $2,000. We can fundraise. We can fundraise. <laughs> <laughs> but the regular ones where you buy the gowns, they're not that much. Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm Eileen Toland um, from Northfield. And um, at Christmas time, we all had a, uh, the Northfield Democrats sponsored the Stop the Heroin program uh, for a Christmas party for the children. And I want to thank all of the people on the board that helped out. It was wonderful. Um, but today, I just want to thank one person in particular who's sinking down in her seat right now. Um, <coughs> the jail 
Oh. Oh. Yeah. yeah. They let the the warden uh, mm -hmm. let the uh, the the, uh, the guards grow their beards in December, and they had to pay for it. And the women were able to wear stud earrings instead of having no jewelry on, and they also paid for it. And I got a call from uh, the Schminkies who run Stop the Heroin, and at first. Jerry had told me that she thought we could come up with, they would come up with about $200. And every time I'd come in here and talk about it, it got a little bit more and more and more. And finally, she gave a check for that to them the other day for $1,250. Wow. So, Jerry, stand up. <laughs> but everybody should know this. It wasn't me. It yes. was the staff. Yes. Everybody you should know that everyone that participated contributed twenty five dollars to keep their November beer in December. And that just we got came a lot from of good leadership from the top though. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> we got a lot of great people that work there, you all know that. So they were very generous. Thank you. Thank you. I'll Thank tell you. Eileen. Mr. Chairman, if we could, I think it, it really does deserve um, Eileen, I believe you deserve some recognition for the hard work that you put into that. Um, and you really got all of us involved, whether it was Democrat, Republican, it didn't matter. We all felt welcome. And um, it really was a wonderful day. It was a That's wonderful amazing. event. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you just the hard work that you, I know many of you um, sitting back there were involved <coughs> as well, it, you should just be commended for the work that you did as well. And, we, and it if be, if it I could just say a couple forgotten. other things. Um, another group that, that really helped out was Egg Harbor Townships the key club um, one of our one of our members um, reached out and she said uh, we don't know if we're going to get any help or not but who knows and when I got to the to the, the hall that day I was late and it was like oh my god how are we going to set this up we had two hours to set because it went from a, a church service to a kids party two hours later and um, there were about a dozen kids that came from Egg Harbor Township. And these kids, no matter what you wanted done, they were doing it. You didn't even have to ask. And they just, and when you didn't need them, you didn't even know where they were. They were just kind of melded into things. But it was just, it was so nice to see young people out there helping. Mm -hmm. And um, and everybody, honest to God, I, I just couldn't get over it. It was just incredible. Every child went home with a bicycle. And, um, and, much more. and, and a lot more. And we all went home with a lot more too. Absolutely. Right. Thanks, everybody. I think you scared the neighbors in a little bit with all the police cars. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had two Santa Clauses that day. That's yeah, why. Yeah. So we had a lot of right there. You know, I know he was there with uh, quite a few. You had a lot of different communities out there, departments, right? It's all. Yeah, we're. That same day we were delivering toys, toys with uh, Toys for Kids. Yeah. And escorting around uh, the uh, entire county. So that, that was one of our stops. That was the yeah. county that were involved. Yeah. That was really nice to see. Uh, Our car. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Fred. <coughs> I did <coughs> want to make a follow up on the uh, uh, resolutions on, on the offshore drilling. Uh, I had an opportunity to talk with Frank Robiondo in October. <clears throat> he takes some risks by his positions on the environment with the party that he's with. But he told me and, uh, and others too, I was in the group, that the, the, the coastal states, his uh, colleagues on the coastal states are the ones that get what's going on no, no matter their party affiliation. And he was working hard to uh, craft a coalition with them because they see the water rising. You know, they they know what's going on, and so he's he's doing what he can, you know, in his, in his end time here to, to help us out. And <clears throat> I'm thinking that you know, I mean I follow this. It's, it's kind of my profession. And I, I read in the New York Times yesterday that the United States of America is the highest oil producer today than any other country in the world. So we're making more oil today now than any other country in the world. And it's just, you know, if you, if you look at a cost-benefit analysis for offshore drilling, it's just not there. And the cost 
for the coastal communities aren't really in the, in the equation. So I thank you for taking the leadership. Thank you. Anyone else in the public wish to speak? Please, please feel free. On any subject. Paul, do you have anything to say? Free older Gatto answered all of my questions. <laughs> Very good. I'm glad that was taken care of. All right. All right, seeing no one, we'll close the public comment portion and we'll go on to the go to the order. Two things. One is that uh, I've heard on the radio today the county executive has indicated that the number of foreclosures in Atlanta County has been going down, uh, which is probably good news for all of us, uh, but other counties around us seem to be going up. Um, but we have been in that at home for a long time, and so uh, it, it could be a sign that the economy is turning around uh, and that less people are losing their properties, uh, no fault of their own for the most part. And, uh, that is certainly uh, good news uh, for everybody. Uh, the second thing is that I just want to acknowledge the Atlanta County Democratic Chairman with the ball spot in his head back there, Michael. Tell him uh, that. Tell him that. I know we lay him out because uh, the Democrats have never come to the meeting to support me, but I can't argue the day. Do you blame him? No. <laughs> but, uh, I just wanted to acknowledge him. Very nice to have you, Michael. Thank you. I would like to make uh, know that today we got word that a uh, one of our most cherished residents of Atlanta County, John Palminteri, passed away. You, many of us know him to be the oldest uh, <coughs> Purple Heart recipient. He is there, you know, even though he lost his sight uh, last year, he is still there at every single Memorial Day, every Veterans Day event. Over there at MacArthur Park, there in Atlanta, or McKinley, whatever it's called, Atlantic City, there for the, you know, it, and uh, he'll be he'll be missed. A moment of silence, please. Thank you very much. Anything else for the good of the order? Yes, sure. really got Two quick things. Number one, the state has finally opened up uh, Main Street and Mays Landing, also uh, Route 40. Um, it's been a pain. It's been very painful. When? Today? Today. Today. Oh my God. Yes, it's been very painful. <laughs> the silence was wonderful. Go to the library again. Oh It'll be okay. Um, so that is open. And then go Eagles. Yeah. Yeah. Go Eagles. Yeah. Yeah. Go Eagles. Yeah. As bipartisan as you can get. Yeah. <laughs> now I'll take a motion. Motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Right. 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 Right.